Hi YouTube and welcome back. In this video, which is part two of the O-ringing video, I'm just trying to show you that there is alternatives to O-ringing. And with the ISKI tool, you could do this at home. It's more of a DIY way of doing O-ringing. There's been tons of questions, so we're gonna start off this video, is I'm gonna to try to just answer a lot of the questions, good questions, I'm suggesting that you do it the way that ISKI wants you to do it and the way that SCE gaskets wants you to do it. Not the wire sticking out. So let's start off right there. The wire. The wire, I'm using stainless, but I also have copper. Back in the day, we would use copper. It was softer. We could use copper with the steel shim head gasket. Now we have stainless, which is harder. The wire that you want to use, go by the manufacturer. The manufacturer of the gasket is going to suggest the wire to use with that gasket. Um, it's difficult to tell you an exact number to let it stick out. And the reason being, it matters on the copper that you're using. I don't know um, the annealing process of copper and how thick it is and what they recommend. They do. On the back of the gasket set, there's instructions right there. But you can go online to SEE and they give you all the info for this gasket. This particular gasket even has little seals around all of the cooling ports. And people want to know also questions. I know I'm kind of going all over the place about how do you seal the water ports. I have never had a problem sealing the water ports. Most common problem is the wire sticks out too high. And when it clamps down, all the clamping force is around the ring but you have no clamping force around the gasket on the water ports. So it is really important that the ring protrude out the right amount. Like I said, it depends on the thickness of the gasket. The thicker the gasket, the more that the ring can stick out. The thinner the gasket, we wouldn't use a 10 or 11,000 sticking out on a real thin gasket. It would seal compression. It's not gonna seal coolant. And a lot of people have had problems with sealing coolant and that's basically the, the problem right there. So it depends on what gasket you're going to run. You a stainless gasket or a steel gasket isn't going to compress the way that a soft copper gasket is. Once again, go to the manufacturer of the gasket. Start off from, the, from there and work your way back. What gasket are you going to run and then do your machine work to fit that gasket. A lot of the problems I think were done in a generic O-ring. Well, a generic O-ring was way back in the day. Like I said, we use uh, copper and it was a different world. So if you use the specs from back in the day, that may cause you some problems. All right. What else? We're talking about sealing the gasket. This is what I use. Halimar. I use Halimar so we, boosted applications and we not having any coolant, any leaks at all. Halimar is what I recommend. If you can't find Halimar, uh, we are doing a eBay store and I'm going to start putting all the stuff that I have links to in our eBay store. Right now we don't contact Shop Mom. Elaine and ask her that you want some Halimar. You can get it at Granger, but it's quite expensive at Granger and it's probably cheaper if you get it from Shop Mom. But all that being said, this is what I use. This is a brush. And this is a spray. So Halimar is a, it's, it's real fluent and it doesn't harden and it seals all of the coolant passages. All right, that's what I use. A, a copper coat was the old school way. I see a lot of guys using RTV silicone. They just put RTV all over the, the deck, the head, the gasket, whatever worked for you. I'm telling you what we use, that doesn't mean that what you do is wrong. It doesn't mean anything besides find what works for you. All right, I like SCE's new gasket. I don't want to talk about it yet because I don't like to try stuff on a customer's motor. It'll be a development motor, but this is the Titan gasket. Used it, love it, does 100%. I suggest this, this is, don't worry about my suggestion. I love it. I, I, I love this gasket. I love SCE. You call them, you talk to them. They'll walk you through it, not a problem. That's all, all great. The new one has a built-in uh, stainless ring right at the edge, embedded at the edge of it, and it's real cool. As you clamp it down, it's at the end, so when the more boost you get, the tighter the sealing pressure on the ring. New technology, and I'm dying to try it, so um, once I try it, once we know it works, I may never go back to this older way, but 
there's no one way for everybody. All right, so we've talked about the, the, the rings that we've had a lot of questions. Copper's a lot softer. You can use um, you can use copper on. It's a lot more forgiving. So, like I said, if you're going to run an old school steel um, shim head gasket, I would run the copper one. I'm running stainless because of the copper gasket. Also, people have asked, what about a receiver groove? Most common, yes, run a receiver groove. So, RTV. All right, don't want to go over the same things again. The tool, we've gone over it. Love it, love it, love it. I take a, just a depth gauge that's used to check a piston to deck clearance. I change out the bit, probably put a picture of it right there, of a bit that I have ground that will, that will fit right inside the groove. And that's how I check to make sure that I have all my depth. Which I have it set at zero right there at zero inside the o-ring groove and then there's the deck there's our thirty thousands what i've done is i've taken a depth mic and i don't know if you can see it or not there you go and i've worked the tip so we can get inside of the groove here and we can check our measurement it's on the money all right let's move on to the other side this side is done if you watch the video, it's going to get redundant. Don't get tired. I'm going to put that part of the redundance part of the video at the end. So by then you can log out. I'm checking them all just for peace of mind. If you notice, they're all on the money. With this, you set it and you forget it and it works. But if you're like me and you want to just verify, easy way to do it, grind a tip that fits in there, you're done. Set it at the deck at zero, put it on there, it should be 30 also the amount of uh, that you cut uh, really doesn't make a difference the total does 30 thousandths we do uh 25 and 5 and the reason we do that is because the first cut is going to be a rougher cut and then we do a fine finesse 5 thousandths cut which i find that leaves a real nice sharp cut there um iski suggests that who am i to argue with iski so but you could do 10 10 and 10 however you want to make it as long as the depth is correct that's the most important part installing the o-rings just go by the manufacturer go inlay square cut overlay it mark it pull it back cut it take a, a file or a stone in the front cut it i like to get a real tight cut um i like them to sit where you can't even basically tell it's there so go all right the o-rings the manufacturers want you to put the end gap right at a bolt hole um more clamping pressure there i, I do what the manufacturer says uh, put them all at aiming in one bolt hole i just suggest that you at least put them all aiming the same place and the how do you remove your o-rings when you're doing a service if you have to replace them bonus tip of the day take a tig welder if you have one and you're good at it and it's what i do and i just lightly with a filler rod, stainless rod, touch the wire O-ring, TIG welder, a light little tap, it sticks to it. I pull the wire, it comes out, and we're done. If you don't have that, go to the end gap and put a fine little punch, machine it so it's not wider than your gap. Go right in there and just tap it, and it will actually just lift it up when you tap, and then you'll pull it out. Don't sit there and chisel all around it and dig it all out. But they are made to be serviced. So that was a little bonus tip of the day. Use your TIG welder if you got it. If not, pick the end. All right. Let's get out there and we're going to go and finish up. Um, the blocks have been cleaned. We're going to put all the O-rings in. And after that, it's going to get a little redundant. It's just repetition. So I'm thinking I'm just going to leave it on there. You can fast forward or at this point you got the information that you needed. And I'm going to let the film just go and me putting all the O-rings in. Maybe some more info that I'll throw in there. I don't know. But let's get out there and get this thing done. I don't know if you can see that. But that's our 25. I'm starting out at, set it up at 30. That's what I'm going to do as my cut down to zero to my flat. So I find it easier to stop. I'm going to zero. When I get to zero, I will have cut down, going this way, 30 thousandths. See that? So I've set the, the cutter up to cut 25 as my first cut. So I'm putting it into the groove. And as you can see, I have five left to go. 
So that tells me that I'm doing good. And I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these. Then we'll reset the, the cutter up for another five. That will be our 30. So our first...
Okay, now that we have the O-rings cut, I've washed the block, it's ready to assemble. So now we're gonna go ahead and install the O-rings. Um, the stainless wire will come in a roll. This is 41,000 thick stainless. You can use a copper as well. Um, I prefer to use stainless. We're gonna use a copper head gasket and an aluminum solder head. So we're using stainless, 041. It comes in a roll. As soon as you undo this tang right here, you're gonna just have it go all over the place. And then you're gonna have a big, a bigger roll like this. Then what I like to do is go ahead and start by putting the ring in here, roll it around and go ahead and pre-cut eight rings that are slightly bigger than what you need. It's easier to work with. So now you can see that I've cut the rings and they overlap. So this is what we want. Easier to work with than doing the whole roll. I'll just leave it slightly bigger. Then what another trick is, you're gonna need a pair of dikes. Some of the old school ones, I tried this new one from our tool bin, and actually, I kinda like it. It's an expensive, just pair of cutters. Cut it, but you don't. Once it's cut, it is gonna still have a slight little um, spot where it was cut. I take a honing stone, that spot, right, that I just clipped, and now I've gotten rid of, when you cut it, it leaves two indentions and a little bit wider on the other side. Now, if you can see this or not, we will try. It's nice and flat now. I've taken a honing stone and just filed it. You can see the groove on the honing stone right there it is. And we'll sit there and just file it. doesn't take a lot, even though it's stainless, to get a nice flat spot. So we want a nice flat spot. Um, let's see if I can stay even zoomed in maybe. I like to also, also put mine at the same spot. Um, instead of having them be all over the place, I put mine straight up. When you start putting the O-rings in, the manufacturer wants you to put them in at the bolt hole. There's more clamping force at the bolt hole. I do stuff a little bit different and I don't suggest you do it how I do it. And the reason being, especially if I'm working with an aftermarket block, uh, the deck is real rigid. So cl clamping force, I get it. Under a microscope, under, you know, whatever you want to use, there's more clamping force on the bolts. Yes. You know how much room there is in between the bolt hole and the O-ring? Not much. And at different areas, there's more room. So I would put an O-ring in a different spot than conventional. So that's the way that I do it. I don't suggest that you do it. For this video, I'm putting them all up just to make it easier for the video as well. Disclaimer, put your O-ring gaps at the bolt hole and do it like the manufacturer says. Don't do it like Danny says. Even though on the video, you'll see, I just pick anywhere ac across the top. It's not a stock block. It's an aftermarket block. There's a bunch of different reasons why I do it this way. Coming back afterwards to take an O-ring out, sometimes they'll be difficult to get out. And sometimes you have to get a punch and you have to punch the O-ring out. If you have only this much space in between the bolt hole and the O-ring, it's not very forgiving. If I'm using a different area up here as opposed to right in there and it gets damaged just a little bit, you have more room there that area between the bolt hole and the o-ring is so tight anyway and then having two pieces of wire land there i personally like i said this is the way that i've been doing it i move it away from the bolt hole never lost one don't do what i do do what the manufacturers suggest all right disclaimer and when you watch the videos don't comment everything you're not putting the o-rings at where the manufacturer wants to i'm suggesting you do that I'm telling you why. If they get picked and you damage it a little bit, you can go in there and repair it a lot easier. There's not a lot of room there by the o by the bolt hole. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to tap in this O-ring, but we're going to stop before getting all the way in. You want to use a brass hammer, um, the back of a gasket scraper works really well. Uh, You can pretty much just go all the way around. If you cut everything correct, it will fit right in the groove. If it's loose, 
it's going to pop out and you're going to have, you're going to be, you're going to be struggling. All right. I want to leave enough up to where I can get back in here and snip that and also file it nice and flat. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to push this in, hopefully my hands out of the way and it's not going to be out of the way and it's going to make it harder, but I push it in all the way around till I get the overlap. that I'm not anything further than that spot I just cut. I'm gonna go ahead and tweak it. Feeling around the top of it, seeing if there's any humps in it. We don't want any humpy dumpties. And just making sure it's down in the groove all the way. Look at there. I don't know if y'all can see that. How I like it, nice and square. Whichever one I want to choose. I'm going to choose this side. I got it just square from the clip. When you're using a pair of dikes to cut it, it's gonna leave little squeeze marks from when you clipped it. So I'm just getting it nice and square. I'm gonna start my O-ring at the same place I always start mine. Go around, and around we go. And when we get close, that's where I wanna stop. Now I'm going to take my marker and just mark where it's going to end. Leave a little bit on the long side. Let's see what I got here. If I could do it with the camera around the other side and left-handed, y'all could do it. I know you can. I know you can, I know you can, I know you can. like it like it I love it I want some more of it Let's see if we can't zoom in right there there you are 
from the top down, you'll see that there ain't nothing but love going on there. All right, so our deck is done. Stop it, people. I don't know what y'all are thinking. All right, so we have all our O-rings in on the top, and I'm really liking them. Really good. This side's done. We'll do the other side. Hope that's uh, giving you an insight of O-ringing and how you can do this at home. Like I said, you could do this in the vehicle. Um, it's much easier when it's flat, but that doesn't make a difference. If it's a four-cylinder or six-cylinder, it's going to be flat. Um, all that being said, I hope this helps you understand how to O-ring a block. All right, now we're back. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope I didn't ramble on too much at the beginning of the video. Um, I tried to answer the questions that have come up. Leave me a comment. Leave me a like. Hit me a notification if you want to get notified when I do come on. A lot of times I'll come on a lot, um, just live stream and answer questions. Uh, we do a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I'll just come on and answer questions. So if you want to see the, those, um, hit the, the notification button. Hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment, good or bad. I'll try not to drop you in the grease and I try to answer, and I try to always be polite. Sometimes I even can get a little frustrated. We are all human. So, all right, so this is it. It's over, I hope you've enjoyed part two. Um, leave me a comment on other videos you wanna see. If you want a part three that's just questions and answers, let, you know, let me know. All right, I'm out of here because we gotta go home and edit videos. Some of the questions, some of the questions are how do you remove the metal from the bore? A, I don't suggest you O-ring a motor with the piston still in. We don't assemble our engines and O-ring them at the end. All right, I hope it's been informative, educational, and if you know me, at least entertaining. If it has, leave me a comment. Um, hit the subscribe, the notification. Tell your buds, tell your friends. All right, I'm gonna get out of here because I got a lot of editing to do. So we'll see you on the next one.